actually is the albedo effect? Well, the basic level is the fact that light coloured substances generally reflect more light and other electromagnetic radiation than do dark colours. This in turn means that dark coloured objects in direct sunlight absorb or retain more heat from the sun than do the light colours. Whilst this interesting effect by itself, when applied on a planetary scale, it does produce some interesting possibilities. In nature, the Earth does change colour quite significantly from time to time. The seasons change the colour and the amount of leaves. Even a rain shower may change the colour of the soil. However, the most noticeable effect in terms of the albedo effect is in winter, when the ground and many other things may be covered in a layer of snow. When an area is completely blanketed in snow, quite a significant part of the sun's energy is now reflected off the surface, and as a result, the area is significantly cooler, purely as a result of the albedo effect, rather than just it being cold weather. So what would happen if the planet were to enter into an entire long period of cold temperatures, as in the Ice Age. Well, as the temperature drops across the planet, the area covered by snow and ice also increases. The more the surface is covered by snow, the more the sun's energy is reflected away, the more the general temperature drops, so the more snow and ice covers a larger proportion of the surface, in a positive feedback loop. This kind of, kind of runaway climate change may have happened to the Earth before. It's possible that about 650 million years ago, the Earth was completely covered in snow and ice, what is referred to as snowball Earth. It needed significant increases in CO2 levels and volcanic activity to break the Earth free from this icy grip at the time and give us the more balanced levels we know today. However, of course, the albedo effect does also work in the opposite direction. As the climate warms, the snow and ice melt, and less and less heat is reflected away, meaning the planet warms up some more. So far though, I've just been talking about natural processes. Human intervention can also play a significant part in the albedo effect. Dark surfaces, such as tarmac roads and slate roofs, also absorb more heat than would otherwise be the case in a natural environment. This influence goes even further than that. By choosing what plants to grow, we also have a significant effect. Coniferous forests, darker leaves and do deciduous forests, and so also enhance the albedo effect. Now, when combined with global warming, the albedo effect may present a significant risk to the climate of our planet. And that once a significant proportion of the polar ice caps have melted, even if we manage to get greenhouse gases under control, the planet will still continue to warm because more of the heat from the sun is being retained in the earth. However, it isn't quite as clear cut as it may seem. Firstly, the amount of the impact the albedo effect may have on the overall climate isn't fully understood. And because the ice caps are at the poles, they actually get less of the sun's energy anyway for the air they cover than would a similar sized region at the equator. So the melting of the polar ice caps may have less impact than say mountain ice and glaciers closer to the equator than they'd have on general global warming as a result of the albedo effect. So that's the albedo effect. More than just a scientific curiosity, it may have a significant impact on the Earth's future.